out right in front of the tent. <laughs> Didn't look like you sweated at all. How'd it go out there? Fine. How much did you run? How much did you walk? Oh, I mostly walked. Well, I don't think I walked too slow. She can tell you she was with me. You had quite a, quite, quite, a, quite a crowd there with you. Oh, yeah. That was great. How, how special was it to have all your family and your grandkids here and all that? Well, it was very encouraging. How many people did you have with you? How many people did you have with you, walking with you? Oh, overall, give or take, it was probably 20 or so. You, you probably already got asked something similar, but what does it feel like and what does number 50 mean to you? Uh, you, you I couldn't put it in words what it means because uh, knowing a lot of the things and knowing, mainly most people don't recognize age and they've never been that old to experience what it's like, but uh, there's so many uncertainties about it. And you're just mainly hoping to start it and find a way to get through it. And you don't really know until you get there. And this is the best I've felt in the last two or three years, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, I give all the credit to the Lord. He guided me through. And my dependence is on, upon Him. And then all the people that make part, uh, the whole road race, all of the people who are the volunteers, people like Junior, one of the former leaders of the Peace Tree Road Race, and all kind of people along the way encouraging and hollering at you and lifting you up. It's great. You got quite a reception at the finish line from the fans and the announcement. That was me. I'm not that, I, I don't hear all that well, but <laughs> sometimes that's a good blessing. <laughs> you can you hear look what back, you want to. You've worked a lot, really hard, I know, to get to this point. How do you look back oh, now? Oh, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to take lightly on that. That's another thing about people this old. And they don't realize what it, what you really need to do. Now, I can't say how much. You'll never know. But I know that the consistency of doing certain things will help make it happen. Lots better than just taking a chance on that. So what about number 51? We'll wait and see. It depends on what I do each day towards that day. And we'll just have to wait till the dust settles and let me see what I begin to get back to. What happens tomorrow? Tomorrow? Uh, I just kick around. Yeah. Back of the routine? No, I'll start that. I don't know when I'll start that. It could be the next day or after that. I, I don't know. It's just uh, each individual has their own way of doing things. I never try to get somebody to do what I do because they're not me and I'm not them. When, so, when did this become a streak that you wanted to keep going? Like, when did you know, oh, I'm going to keep this keep this streak going? Like, how many years ago was that? Well, I guess after it getting off the ground in the beginning, which anybody uh, saw what it was like through the pictures and what people have said, you weren't sure way back then. It could have just been a fad or a novelty, one and done, or whatever. And uh, and as you uh, as you go along through the years, uh, people like Julia, Tim Singleton, they would say to me every once in a while, and it really encouraged me. They said, now, "You're the only one that's done them all so far. Keep going." And that was real encouraging. And uh, and so it just became a year after year thing. Whoever would imagine that little tiny group that first day evolving into what was out there today. It's, it's unimaginable. Was it any different for the 50th? I know they put a lot of 
wanted to make a really big deal out of this. Did it feel even bigger than the rest of them? Uh, by who? Me or? Just, just being out there on the course. Oh, well, I had my own personal goal there that I wanted to. When you get that far, you sure want to see the end of it. And so my thoughts had to be heavily about that. And yet they were doubtful at a lot of times. But that's the way we all are anyway. That's how this country came up. You had to pioneer everything. <laughs> Did you have a, uh, a goal time? Or you just want to finish? <laughs> no, no, at this point. Uh, what, what's the fastest you ran? And, uh, you know, like when you did that? The entire time? No, I meant like ever at this race, like what's your fastest? You're talking about overall of them. Yeah, you are. So. Yeah. It was the year, Julia may know the date, uh, it was the year when the thing bloomed out beyond oh, what they were. 1990. Is that when it was? Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember. It seemed to me like it was. Uh, 1991 from 40, 25 to 40. No, I meant like from uh, that little group in the beginning. Oh, way there. And, uh, oh, 19, and, and they uh, weren't ready for it. It was over 4,000 oh, oh, or something. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 1995. Uh, I can't. Anyway. <coughs> I don't remember how old I was. I know that when I started running the, the Peachtree, I was probably about 38 or something like that. And. Uh, and, and I was still kind of a neophyte into running because I'd never been a runner, and especially a known runner. I was just a duffer, and yet I was competitive. And I knew I couldn't win, but I knew I could keep improving my time. And that was my goal, to get under 40. And it was that year that the finish line backed up about a block and I was frustrated to the hill because I knew I had gotten right under 40 and people the line was so long they blocked the clock there was a clock down there at the end and uh, and I was just frustrated but I found out through a, a trial and error from talking to people that I, I got under Right under 40, and that was the best ever. Very nice. Congratulations. Hey.